Well, I, I think this is an interesting one because I, I come across a lot of older collectors who were maybe collecting 10, 15, 20 years ago, and especially dress watches. They have spent a lot of money often having them professionally restored mm -hmm. to essentially mint condition. And then they come in and see us and we look at them and say, oh, well, this is refinished, restored in a way that says that's not a good thing. And they feel very upset because they feel that they've done right by this historic watch in, in taking it back to as new condition. And I think this is a, an interesting dichotomy, firstly between dress and sport slash tool watches, because I think there's almost a tradition that it's somehow okay to refinish a dress watch because it should look like it's barely worn, and tool watches need to bear the scars of their everyday work. But what's interesting is we still want minty tool watches, but not too mint, because we want the loom to have aged. And I just think this is a, a, an area where the, the collecting hobby, if you like, is conflicted. We don't know whether we want something to be mint or worn. If it's worn, it's got to be done something exciting, like a military watch. Is restoring something that's just about to fall apart okay? If the loom plots have gone, do you wear it with the loom plots gone? Or do you get somebody to do a, a good job? And will it ever come back round? It's fascinating. I mean, it's a fascinating area. Um, I think I think we've got we've got so many so many levels of this. Um, you've got. I mean, I, I, mean, I think we're all agreed. Something that is in absolutely brand new condition and is vintage is 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 the top, and it's very very interesting. But where, as you say, where do you draw the line? I mean, you've got something that's got a completely trash dial. Um, yet it's a very interesting and fantastic watch. Do you just discard it and say, well, that's it, it's finished, it's, it's dead, it's done? Or do you get it restored? And, and, and what, what, what effect should that have on, on the value? And I think the, <clears throat> the idea of, uh, of, of, of the parallel um, of, of the cars, having, making cars from, from barn finds to, to completely restored, fantastic, better than new condition, um, is not something that is reflected in the watch world at all, as soon as you touch something. And it, maybe it has a reflection on the fact that, that there is this need for things to be correct. So maybe people correct things that and do it in 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 a less than straightforward way so they try and hide it and and that's i think that's that's i think that's the the hurdle that there is at the moment you've got really got this 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 problem of the need for things to be correct and to be right and there should there should be a a, a full disclosure um a, ability to be able to say well you know it's been restored but isn't it fantastic anyway um, that's my that's my point of view. I certainly agree with both of you, uh, gentlemen. I think um, it is interesting to think that 10, 15 years ago, there was almost a sort of assumption or compulsive obsession around the idea of restoring a watch to its uh, its earlier glory. Um, and we see that all the time, you know, watches popping up and being offered and, and you have to, you know, kindly and gently uh, and unoffensively tell the gentleman or, or lady who wants to sell the watch that unfortunately it's not worth what it what it could have been if they'd not restored it that is a fashion of its time that has shifted in the last 10 15 years my view for the better uh, you will always get extreme cases where things are perhaps you know you see extreme um, attempts to uh, falsify originality so restorations that go to the nth degree which obviously overcomplicate markets particularly vintage Rolex I, I think it's fair to say but increasingly others but um, you know it's 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 interesting because uh, a lot of the watch restorers and, and the best servicing agents for, for vintage watches themselves haven't quite necessarily caught up with times in their mind a beautifully restored vintage watch is still of greater value than an original watch and having that conversation with them in the first instance i found one of the most revealing because you could see that it had really sort of impregnated it in their thinking and uh, and they had then ridden that wave and now you're having to say well stop don't touch that watch before you buy it or before you speak to anyone about it. Let me see it and, and, and let's leave it where it is, perhaps. 
On the other hand, I have a perfect example in mind where I recently got a, bought a watch a year ago actually, and I had to send it back to the brand and go through that horrible sort of gut-wrenching decision of having a full restoration um, because it had been badly restored in the past. So there had been, um, it's, it's, uh, it's a Jaja de Coute Geophysique Lux, one of the 10, I think, rose gold pieces that were ever made and no one knew about it and it was, I bought it at auction, mislabeled in Germany and no translations and this, that and the other and I was delighted. But when it arrived on closer inspection, I saw that there was something not quite right with the print. And so even though it was subtle, I knew that anyone worth their salt would, would spot the mistake and naturally the right thing to do was to, 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 to get it completely corrected because it would be impossible to find a, an original dial and get it serviced by the brand at, at considerable expense and time because at least then you can say well it's been done the way it should be even if it's restored um, so yeah i think there are exceptions to the rule but the general trend is certainly better to leave unrestored well we've got this kind of stratification haven't we because mm. as you said the uh the ultimate is the new old stock box and papers fell down the back of the safe 40 <laughs> years ago. And be because of its rarity, these are personal objects, they get worn, they get worn out, mm. they get serviced. And so something that hasn't, its rarity speaks for itself. But then th the next stage down is, th we would say, is probably a worn original example. Mm but there's an awful lot of watches that seem to be getting almost left behind because either they're a very heavily worn mm. to the point of worn out mm. or they are worn and then restored and with the polarization of prices certainly in the auction market we're finding that there's a lot of nice watches that seem to be getting left mm. to the side so it will be interesting to see if these do get picked up and whether the, the issue of transparency that you raised is an interesting one. Obviously, if people are trying to hide that this is a restoration, that's something we don't want because we want the market to reflect honesty. Yeah. It is what it is. But if we, say, look to the, the vintage car market where you have buyer finds versus concourse, and you have restorers of high quality who can say, I can take this back to exactly the quality. This won't be some horrible, wonky printing, over lacquered, dial this will be as good as the day it left that brand even if those skills are lost to the brand themselves mm -hmm. then I think there's an argument for saying you know especially on a dress watch which it's kind of mm. doing it justice that you could advertise it as almost restored by and if there was a, a recognized restorer of high quality that might start to add some sort of cachet to the piece. I guess um, transparency is everything. Yeah. Because uh, there are there are vintage watch businesses that I think uh, make pretty much 100% of, of their sales on the basis of restoring vintage watches to sort of their, their former glory and, um, and, it, and it seems to work well for them because there are clients who, who want it. So I think if honesty and transparency in, in what you're selling is, is the only caveat. To well we have the, the, the um, shall we say the customization of modern pieces mm -hmm. so you know the next step logically seems to be if you have a, a a very tired and not attractively aged vintage piece mm -hmm. then maybe that's ripe for sensitive and high quality work which is actually advertised and paraded rather than hidden and 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 lied about yeah. Yeah. It all comes, to me, it comes down to disclosure. Yeah. I mean, I, I love a Seiko, as anybody who knows me well knows. And Seiko fans are notorious for modding their watches because they're cheap, they're easy to work on. If you break it, go and buy another one and you start again. You can change bezels, you can change dials, handsets, um, change the cases, swap them around, make something you love, and then show it off and go, I built that. Isn't it great? Mm -hmm. Or not, um, <laughs> depending on your level of taste. Um, but having said that, the collectors of the vintage get very, very concerned about aftermarket dials and bezels, just like any other brand collector. But I think as long as you are disclosing and saying, this is something I built myself, this is, um, and on the other side saying, no, this is vintage but has these parts changed make of it what you will and the price you want to pay i think that's where you have to 
to draw the line. I think it. I think it, it does. It comes down to that. That pretending it's not what it is is the is is the problem. So making something making something from parts to look like something that it wasn't to begin with. So I think you're you're, you're totally right. It's completely. It's completely about transparency and honesty, and that and that's that's what will affect the market and will will have have the effect on the market. Get any of any of them. I mean, the, 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 there's there's an old example of this, and that would be the um, the striped Rolex prints. We all, we all remember. Um, and 15 years ago, 20 years ago, they were they were incredibly popular and very very saleable, uh, and the price was going up and up and up. And then you got people swapping movements around and putting different cases in, and then making up cases to put to put them in, and really making fake watches. And that and that's 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 when the market went. Okay, well, we're not touching any then. If we're not sure about some, then where where do we where do we know? So they the the market disappeared to a certain extent, and I think that's where the Franken Franken. Frankenstein watches is a is a big problem. What I I mean I, I agree. What I what I like about the way times are changing, um, if I'm honest, is that you know if you look back ten years to sort of the the, the beginnings of uh, the sort of the collectors online forums and other sort of mediums through which collectors would exchange notes and check and and, and serial numbers and this that and the other, the way that has escalated and developed. Sometimes, sometimes not necessarily for good, but in the majority, definitely yes. It's allowed so much greater uh, sort of fact checking and oversight and forced the hands of so many people who used to perhaps hide in the shadows and, and rely upon the obscurity of what they're doing and the need for in-depth knowledge and um, the absence of evidence, photography or otherwise, for them to double check things. That has now changed and so you almost have you know, in a in a in a generally benevolent way, an, a sort of uh, uh, an authenticity police online at all times, who can check photos, yes. who can look, and you know, and, and 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 in most cases, I think when mistakes are made, they're probably innocent because actually, you know, there isn't really, um, it isn't easy to necessarily recognise when something has has been changed in a movement that's as subtle as a as a as a small part or a piece. It's much more obvious when it's on the dial side because that's where all the attention gets focused on. Um, but the way the market has changed means that I think now not only will there be greater expectation of transparency, there will be an obligation, a sense of there not being any choice but to provide additional photos and, and additional levels of, of uh, disclosure to avoid the potential catastrophic sort of criticism of a, a big chunk of the community online. Because that stays forever and a day, that particular criticism is there on a page in, in, on the internet. So I, I think we're, we're shifting um, in a healthy way. I think it's just going to require a lot of careful, careful management.